Boy Rock Church. Morning. How's everybody doing this morning on this, this beautiful St. Patrick's Day? Morning. I see some green out there. If your person, uh, person next to you is not wearing green, go ahead and give him a little pinch right now. You know, give him a little, little, little squeeze right there. Um, it's, 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 it's a good day to, to, to wear green, I guess. This, this was the only kind of green shirt I have, so I guess I better buy more green stuff. I guess I could have worn my camouflage stuff. That would have been kind of green. So that would, I don't think uh, that would be appropriate up here to, to be wearing camel as I'm, I'm preaching. Um, that would just be kind of weird. So uh, good morning, and, and thank you for coming. Uh, we just finished up a, a good series on, on the fishes of men, challenging us to go out and, and cast our nets and, and be, be the fishes of men that God has called us to be. Right? He called the disciples to go out and, and reach the world, and it didn't just stop with him. It goes on with us, and we got to do our part and to, go, to go out and, and catch, the, catch those fish and and so thank you to all that you can. Thank you, Pastor Tim, again, for, for stepping in and, and finishing that up. And it, it was a good series. But today we, we, we start something new. But before that, I, I want to just talk a little bit about, about St. Patrick. Right? St. Patrick was, 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 a, was, I didn't really know much about St. Patrick until I, until I looked it up. But I didn't know that he was, he was born uh, as, as Maywin Suckett. How would you like to have a last name like Suckett? Not me. He was born in a, in a Roman colony in, in, in Britain around uh, 30, 387 A.D. And at the age of 16, he was kidnapped by par- pirates and carried off to Ireland. But while in Ireland, he began to pray and he, he got a hold of the Lord and he knew he was. And so he spent uh, uh, many, uh, he would pray 100 times a day while he was in captive there for, for six years in Ireland. And he came back, and he was freed, and, and he went to, to uh, seminary school, and he became a, a bishop and a priest, and went back to Ireland to be a missionary there. And while he was there, he, uh, he, had, he had evangelized the, the, the Celtics out there, and, and 120,000 new believers were baptized there, and 300 churches were established in Ireland. And he served and worked there for 30 years until he died on March 17th, in 461. And this is a man who, who, was, who was a game changer. My title of today's message is a game changer. But he was a game changer. And a couple weeks ago, I went out to a, a pastor's retreat where it was just a time of, of solitude, a time of relaxing and, and just being with, well, of course, with another, but we had to spend time alone by ourselves in, in, the, in the wilderness and we just spent time with the Lord. And the main theme of, this, of that camp was a, a prayer that St. Patrick wrote. I want to recite it to you. I want to read it to you here this morning. You can follow along on the screen, but, but listen to the words. People don't, people don't talk like this anymore. It just how he describes the Lord and how he, how, he, how he fully loved the Lord and how he fully put all his trust in the Lord. And, and it's a prayer I've just been reading every morning as I get up out of bed, um, put on my glasses, or else I can't read anything, and, and just put my hope and put my faith in the Lord. So let's read this prayer today. Christy, you got me? You can follow along. All right. So it says, I rise today in power and strength, invoking the Trinity, believing in threeness, confessing the oneness of creation's creator. I rise today in the power of Christ's birth and baptism, in the power of his crucifixion and burial, in the power of his rising and ascending, and in the power of his descending and judging. I rise today in the power of the love of cherubim, in the obedience of angels, in the, and the service of archangels, in hope of rising and receiving the reward, in the prayers of the patriarchs, in the predictions of the prophets, in the preaching of the apostles, in the faith of confessors, and in the innocence of holy virgins, and in the deeds of righteous. I rise today in heaven's might, in sun's brightness, in moon's radiance, in fire's glory, in lightning's quickness, in wind's swiftness, in sea's depth, in earth's stability, in rock's fixity. I rise today with the power of God to pilot me, God's strength to sustain me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eyes to look ahead for me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak to me, God's hand to protect me, God's way before me, God's shield to defend me, God's host to deliver me from the snares of devils, 
from evil temptations, from nature's failings, from all who wish to harm me, far and near, alone and in the crowd. Around me I gather today all these powers against every cruel and merciless force to attack my body and soul, against the charms of false prophets, the black laws of paganism, the false laws of heretics, the deceptions of idolatry, against spells cast by women, smiths, and druids, and all unlawful knowledge that harms the body and soul. May Christ protect me against poison and burning, against drowning and wounding, so that I may have abundant reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ to the right of me, Christ to the left of me, Christ in my lying, Christ in my sitting, Christ in my rising, Christ in the heart of all who think of me, Christ on the tongue of all who speak to me, Christ in the eye of all who see me, Christ in the ear of all who hear me. I rise today in power and strength, invoking the Trinity, believing in threeness, confessing the oneness of creation's creator. For to the Lord belongs salvation, and to Christ belongs salvation. May your salvation, Lord, be with us always. Amen. Amen. What a powerful prayer that is. What a life-changing prayer that, that, that there was. St. Patrick went back after he had six years of slavery because he had a passion for a people, because he loved a people, and, and God just raised it up within his heart to be a game-changer. He changed the world, and, and he got people through this, the rough times. And even today, this prayer gets us through rough times. I've been reading that every morning for the past two weeks, and it's just some about the words. It just lifts me up. And, and me being, being an outdoorsy kind of guy, I really like that part where he talks about heaven's might and sun's brightness and moon's radiance and in fire's glory. God, how wonderful is it to sit by a campfire and just see the richness of it? And just see the, the flames and the colors that, that comes from it and how, how radiant the heat and warmth. And, and that's God right there and all of that. And in, in sea's depths, how deep is the seas? We have no idea. God is that deep and deeper. And rocks fixity, right? Who's, who's talks like that? But we were at a place where, where rocks were stacked on top of each other and they were, they were fixed there. They weren't going to move. For, since the creation, since the beginning of time, those rocks have stood there. And they've stood the test of time. They haven't moved. And you can just see God's strength and his sureness in the creation that's all around us. And I've just been thinking about that and wondering, God, how do, how do we miss it nowadays? How do we not see you in all that's going on? I think every one of us, every one of us needs to go to Big Five after work, after church, buy a tent, and head out to the mountains. Head out to the mountains. If you want to buy a camper, they're a little more expensive, a little more comfortable. But if we get out in God's creation, if we get out away from the city, the stars that were up there, we were out in Joshua Tree, California, in the middle of nowhere, and the stars that just radiated at night, it was just breathtaking and, and beautiful, and, and there's God's glory, and there's God's presence. Didn't mean to go off on that tangent. But God is great. God is wonderful. And God has called us be like St. Patrick. He's called us to be a game changer. And that's my title of my message to me, is, is to be a game changer. Right? The, the Bible has some great examples of game changers that, that came to earth. Right? Jesus. He came to earth. He was a game changer. Peter preached at Pentecost and 3,000 were saved. He was a game changer. Paul took at least three missionary journeys and wrote most of the New Testament. He was a game changer. And there's, there's, there's many more that were in there that were game changers. And they changed the, the way, the direction, the way the church was going. And that still applies to us today. I want to be a game changer that changes the direction of the way this church is going. I don't think we should be a church that just sits here and gathers on Sunday mornings from, from, 10, 30, or from 10 to, to 11.30. 11.45 when Pastor Tim preaches. But I don't think we should, we should, I'm just kidding. He's shorter than I am. Um, I don't think we should just gather here and just, oh, have church, have church. We need to go outside those doors 
and have church. We need to go outside those doors and be game changers. Bring them back into the house of God and, and, and then fill them up and, and then we all go out again together. So, so my message today is, is on game changers. And the text from my, my scripture is found in 2 Chronicles 24. You can turn there and we'll get to it in a little bit um, and get prepared. You can open your Bibles or turn on your phones. But in here, we'll, we'll see a story of, of, <clears throat> of, of uh, King Joash who wanted to, to build the, the, restore the temple. And today is our, is our building fund uh, uh, pledge day. On the seat, you'll see cards there that, that we'll talk about in a little bit. I have mine right here. But I wanted to give us some, some context and some scripture of why, we're, of why we're doing this. So in 2 Chronicles 24, verses 1 through 13, you can follow along on the screens, uh, but we'll read it here. So it says, Joash was seven years old when he, became, when he began to reign. That right there is a miracle in itself. How many of you have any seven-year-olds right now? Do you think they're ready to reign and be king? My, my oldest is barely ready to reign and be king, but he can do it. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Zibiah of Beersheba, and Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the days, all the days of Jehoiada, the priest. And Jehoiada got him two wives, and had sons and daughters. Jehoiada was a good guy. He helped him out. And after Joash decided to, to restore the house of the Lord, and he gathered the priests and the Levites and said to them, go out to the cities of Judah and gather from all Israel money to repair the house of the Lord. And from year to year, and see, uh, and see to it quickly. But the Levites did not act quickly. So the king summoned Jehoiada, the chief, and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring uh, in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax levied by Moses, the servant of the Lord and, and the congregation of Israel, for the ten of testimony? For the sons of uh, Althaleah, uh, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God and had also used all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord for all the Baals. So the king commanded, and they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. And proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring in the, the, the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, laid on Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought their tax and dropped it into their chest until they had finished. And whenever the chest was brought into the king's off, uh, officers by the Levites, when they saw that there was much money in it, the king's secretary and the officers of the chief priests would come in and empty the chest and take it and return it to its place. Thus, day after day, they collected money in, in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada gave it to those who had charge of the work of the house of the Lord. And they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of the Lord, and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the house of the Lord. So also they were engaged in the work labored and, and repairing went forward in, in their hands. And they restored the house of God to its proper condition and strengthened it. Joash was a game changer. He saw a problem, he wanted to correct it, he wanted to fix it, and he, and he, and he made a plan to make it happen. For me, like I said, I want to be part of a church, I want to be part of a fellowship that goes out and, and, and changes the area around him. It changes the lives of peoples around them. The Assemblies of God was, was founded on strong missions. We have an emphasis on, on going out and, 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 and supporting missionaries that go out to reach the world. Our church is able to support 40 missionaries as they go out and do their thing. And so I want to be a part of that that, 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 that uh, helps those and reach those. And, and we need to have a place to bring the people in. Right? The, te the temple, the tabernacle is where the, where, is where the people gathered. And we want it to be a nice place. And I know there's, there's other churches here in Apache Junction. I know there's, there's other churches that are, that are in our city. But in our city, we have people who are lost. We have people who, who need hope. We have people who need to, to find the Lord. And so it's up to us to, to bring them in and, and, and to, to help them build that relationship with the Lord, to help them build that, that connectedness with the Lord. And I, my, my understanding of God's word is that the church should should be on the move at all times against the forces of darkness and go out and, and battle it and reach them and bring them in. That's why on, on Saturday, we, we're we, uh, not only having just a photo booth, but we're having a prayer tent as well. 
because we could do some battle right, right, right in, in, in Satan's front yard, right in, in the, the city that, that, that he wants to control. And we'll say, no, we're going to claim this for God's glory. We're going to claim this for God's victory. And let's get together and battle and, and move forward. We need people not only to pray with people, but also people just to kind of hang out and, and pray for the situation and pray for the, the area that's going on. We need to be game changers in this, in this, in this uh, city. So how do we do that? How do, how do we become a, a game changer? And, and what will it require us to, to, to make that happen? Well, first of all, we're going to have to have passion. To be a game changer, we've got to have passion about what is going on. In the Hebrew, we discover a compound word which gives us the idea of, of with and, and his heart. So we're talking about Joash. So with his heart, he, had a, he has a seat of emotions, and, and with his entire soul, he, he wanted to honor God. With all that he had, he wanted to, to, to honor who God is. With all his emotions, with all his being, it gives us a good representation of what Deuteronomy 6.5 says. It says, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Joash loved the Lord with all that he had, even though he was only seven years old when he became king. He understood. He knew who God was, and he loved him and had a passion for, his, for God's people and had a passion for God's house. Because back in then, right, they didn't have churches on every corner. They had one tabernacle, one temple, where they all went to, to, to gather and to worship and to honor the Lord. And they had fallen apart. And he had a passion to restore it, not because it was, it was, it was uh, something that he wanted to be a part of, because, but because it was God's. That temple, that house belonged to God, and he wanted to be a part of it. Right? This temple, this house, this, this, this uh, building that we were in, it may be owned by the Arizona Ministry Network, and we may be renting two suites out of it, but all of this belongs to the Lord. He is in control, and we just want to be able to steward what, what he's given us and, 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 and uh, allow us to, to, to do his plan. And so we have to have passion. We have to care about what's going on in here. St. Patrick had passion for the people of Ireland right? that, that drove him to go back and spend the rest of his life there, 30 years, to be, to be ministering to those people after he'd been enslaved and, and captured by pirates and taken to the land, he wanted to go back and spread the gospel with them. Martin Luther had a passion that literally drove him to nail his 95 Thesis on the front door of the castle church in Win uh, Wittenberg, Germany in 1517. And he began with a prayer. He says, out of, out of the love for the truth and the desire to educate, I list this out. And there's 95 things he listed out. Because he had a passion to educate, because he had a passion for the Lord, he took a stand against all that was going on. He took a stand against the church and said, this is what I want the people to know. And it takes passion to stand out. It takes passion to, to be different. It takes passion and conviction to go out and want to, want to be in a park and pray for people because we care about people. It takes passion to, be, to, to give up on your Saturday morning and say, God, I want to be used by you. Help me to do it. It takes passion to, to write this, this thesis and write this, this whole doctrine and put it on, the, on, the, on the, the doors of the church. It takes passion. But it's that passion that's going to be a game changer. Right? We can look at sports, right? Michael Jordan, I believe he's the best, greatest basketball player to ever play. That man had a passion for basketball. He practiced. Practice day in, day out. He lived it. And, he, and look what it did. It, it brought him great success. He was a game changer in the area of basketball. Martin Luther wanted to reform a corrupt church. He wanted to bring God's, God's house back in order. He was a game changer. And our culture needs game changers. Our culture needs people who are willing to step out and, and, and make things different for them around him. So where's our passion at today? Where's your passion? What are you passionate about? That's a question we need to ask ourselves daily. God, say, God, what am I passionate about? What can I do? So to be a game changer, you've got to have passion. you also got to have a plan. Right? If you don't have a plan, things aren't going to happen and, and nothing's going come to come to pass. 
right? Josiah's, jo- Joash's plan was to take care in the renovation and restoration of the church. It was a project in, in, in as normal as, uh, manner as possible. There was a plan for supporting the work, and the, the Lord has taken care of the finances and facility. I want us to, to think about this, right? Our, our king has a plan for us. He has a plan for us taking care of this facility, taking care of this ministries and the endeavors in which he's called us to do. And his plan is that every person would support this plan. He's called us all to, to honor him and, and, and offer him our first fruits, for one. Right? He's called us to bring the tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my, in my house. He's called us to, to support the church and to lift it up with, through prayer. He's called us to support the church in service and volunteering and, and make everything happen. God's got a plan for this church, and, and he has an idea where he wants us to go, right? He's got a plan for the direction he wants us to go, and it's my job as a pastor to direct us and guide us and lead us down that direction. And it's my job as a pastor to, to encourage everyone and, and sometimes, uh, not reprimand, that's not too harsh of a word, but but to say, hey, this is, this is how it's got to be. This is where it's got to go. This is what we've got to do. See, God is going to be faithful to us when we're faithful to him. We just had a, had a series at the beginning of the year on stewardship. We talked all about how if, how if we're faithful with what God's given us and we honor him with our first fruits, personally, he's going to bless us. And the same principle applies to us as a church. If we honor him with our tithes, if we're faithful to him and steward his his, his uh his property, his finances, his service, and God's going to bless this church. God's going to allow it to, to go and, and, and be, a, be a, a game changer here in the community of Apache Junction. We have a plan. We have a plan to move forward. Right? We have a plan to get involved in, in the community. We have a plan to, to be part of the parades that happen here in the, in the, I forget, this one in the winter, this one in the springtime. We have a plan to to, to build up our, our kids' ministries, our youth, our men, and our women. We have a plan to move forward, and we're preparing the ground and, and waiting to, uh, and preparing the way for God to make all this happen. Because if we don't have a plan, if we don't have a vision, if we don't have a purpose, we're going to fail. Right? If, if people without a vision will fail, then we've got to have this plan. We've got to move forward. We've got to have passion. We've got to have a plan. And we got to be persistent. We can't just give up, man. If, if I had just and if I had given up on in July of 2020, when we came back from COVID and and there was 11 people in the room, if I had given up then, we we wouldn't be here today. But we persisted. We pushed through. We kept going. And God has brought us here to to where we're at today. We were unsure as, as to the we were, in, were unsure as to where the exact timing this young king uh, determined to repair the house of the Lord, right Solomon's temple. But we know that it was in his twenty third year as king. He was about thirty years old when he made this decision, and his plan A wasn't working, right? He he, he had told uh, Jehoiada to go and rally the priests, and they didn't do it. They didn't go out and and, and uh, gather everybody and do what he had asked them to do. So he said, "All right, I got to I got to take this into my own hands. I got to be persistent." about it and make this happen because he, because he knew God had told him what, what to do. He knew he had, a, he had a plan directly from God, so he needed to be persistent on what was going on. And I wonder if, if Jehoiada and the other priests had just gotten comfortable with the condition of the temple. Sometimes we can get comfortable with, with the, what's going on in our house and the condition of it. Sometimes we can get, oh, it's just a, a patch on the wall. It, it's okay. It'll, 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 we'll take care of it later. But right? in, in our house, in our in our own house, we just recently painted the walls on the inside, and we're planning to redo the floors. So I haven't painted the baseboards yet, and there's different colors on the baseboards, and there's paint on the floor, and because we knew we were going to repair the re, re, replace the floor, we weren't too careful with covering it, and it just looks unfinished. And my wife lets me know frequently how unfinished it looks, and I know, I know, I get it, right? It, 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 we're not going to get used to that. We're not going to just let that, that sit there. And, and in church, we can get used to it. You look down. Everybody look down at your feet right now. We can't get used to that. We can't get used to this carpet that's been here for 20 years, and, and it's, it's, it's old and shabby, 
And half of it's carpet. You guys in the back row, you guys look down, you'll see a tile back there. Right? We can't get used to the condition of, of God's house. We've got we to gotta improve it. We've got we to build it up. We've got to care about what's going on here. We've got to be persistent about it. Right? Josiah said, okay, this, this, this isn't working, so he, he built a chest. He built a box. We have a box here. We have a, a chest here. And this, some of you might recognize this. This is from the old building. It was, a, it was our prayer box that we had in the corner. And this is where we would drop in our prayer requests when we, when we, had them, like, when we did that. That way, now we do text insurance. Now we do it electronically. But it's a box that's been in this church for I don't know how long. It was here before I got here. And it's a chest that says, hey, come and, and put, our, put our faith in this. Put our money in this. Put our hope in this. Put our desire to, to see things happen here in this chest. And that's what Joash did. He, he said, we need to rebuild the temple. So he built a chest where people could come and bring and, and give to it. That was his solution. He had a plan. He had passion, and, and he was persistent in all that he did. And finally, he, he knew that, that he couldn't do it alone. It takes partnership. It takes partnership to all get together and to, to build this church and to build this house. We all got to partner together to, 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 to do what God has called us to do. Now you notice the, the, those who were rejoicing, if you look at the, at, the, at the Scripture, it says, and all the princes and all the people decided and brought their tax money, in, or rejoiced, and brought in their tax money. So all the people rejoiced. All the people became a part of it. All the people gathered in because they wanted to partner in the Lord's work. They wanted to partner in with what God is doing. And some of you might say, you know, why does the pastor think he's, uh, he can tell me what to do with my money or put it in an offering chest or do anything like that? First of all, I, I, I rarely talk about money. I talked about it in our stewardship service, but I don't, I don't bring it up a whole lot. Second of all, it's, it's not my chest. It's not my offering plate. This belongs to the Lord. And, and thirdly, it's, it's not our money. It belongs to God. God has blessed us with jobs. God has blessed us with finances. It all belongs to him. And when we offer it to him and we, we give it to him, he tells us in his word that he'll bless us and he'll, watch it, he'll, he'll multiply it. If you look at the scriptures, <clears throat> right, of, of Jesus' parables, 16 out of 29 of them were about money. If you look at the gospels, one verse in every six is about money. So Jesus talked about money more than he did about heaven or hell. Because that's a, that's a soft spot, that's a hard spot, a sensitive spot in people's lives. But you got to know that this is not my money. It belongs to the Lord. God has blessed me with all this. And partners share the expenses. There are, no, there are no silent partners in the kingdom. We all share the expenses. We all carry the Lord, the load for the Lord. There's no way this, this church could ever exist or do what we do without all the volunteers that come and help out. The worship team, the greeters, the ushers, the tech people in the back, the, the kids workers, the ladies that, that, that uh, put the donuts in the cups to make the coffee. Right, we all come together. We all partner together to make it happen. Right, it wouldn't be a good day if we came in on Sunday morning. And there were no donuts. That'd be bad. That'd be a rough way to start it. But when we partner together and we invest, we all can to do great things. Then this church will become a game changer. This church will 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 be a a, a game changer in the city of Apache Junction because we've all come together to make a difference. This building fund that, that, we're, that we're talking about is going to allow us to be a game changer here in the church and in the city of Apache Junction. I want to share with you a little bit about our story and where we came from. In March of, of 2022, we, we moved uh, into this building. We had outgrown the other building. Just for a quick reference, how many of you in this room were, were at the old building? Raise your hands. Raise them high. Raise them high. All right? There was like 10 of us. There was like 10 of us that were at the old building. Not very many of us. And it belonged to the, to the Boys and Girls Club, and they wanted to sell it because they, they wanted to get it off their hands. And we were just at the point to outgrow it. And so we said, all right, so God, where, where do you want us to go? 
And, we, and so this, this building became available, even though it wasn't our first choice, or our second, or third, or fourth choice, or fifth choice. It was our last choice, but God has a plan, right? God knows what he's doing. And he, and he brought us here to this place, and he, he brought us here to this building, and we wanted to, to make it ours, right? There was a church that, that was here beforehand, but we wanted to make it ours. So we spent some time, and we painted all the walls, and we built a stage in our old sanctuary, and we added technology, and we replaced the carpet, and, and brought in, uh, we brought the, the stained woods from the old building to have our backdrop in the other sanctuary, we set up a kid's church and a toddler room and a nursery and built a coffee bar. And now, we, you know, that coffee bar, it's, it's neat to see when, when the, you get here in the morning, there's already orders written on pieces of paper on the, on the counter waiting because people want to have coffee. But we made this place ours. And thankfully, thankfully for, by the previous pastors that were here were wise enough and had built up a nest egg that we were able to do all the renovations uh, paying cash for it. We didn't have to borrow any money or, or change anything. And the church continued to grow, and in June of 2023, we got this half of the sanctuary, or this half of the building. And you may not know it, but we built this, this room, this stage. This back wall was here, but behind that wall, there's, there's more things back there. Off to this side, down those steps, is, is a green room where the worship team gathers before service so they can just get ready and prepare. On this side of the, of the room, we have a conference room where the leadership team meets and there's a big calendar on the wall where we plan to, to, to God's glory what's going to happen. In the back there is my office where I spend time counseling with people or meeting with people or spending uh, Sunday mornings we gather in there to pray. There's a little foyer there that's just a little seating area that's, that's available. And God has given us some great things here in this building. God has given us a great space, and, and my hope, my dream, one day, is it, is, well, let me tell you again, if you didn't understand it, my hope, my dream, one day, is that we own this whole building, right? The Arizona Ministry Network owns the building, and we can buy it from them, and, and when Jim next door decides that he's had enough of necess unnecessary necessities, we'll move into that spot and, and make more classrooms and more space for something. We have a plan, we have a goal, we have a vision to make this place an establishment. A, a far-reaching goal is to buy some property next to us, that empty dirt lot, and turn it into a playground for kids to play. We can cut a hole in that, that brick wall and make a pathway and door out into that area. we got to have a vision for what God wants to do. We moved into the sanctuary because we were starting to outgrow the one next to us. This one, we can, we can hold a, a, probably about 80 or 90 more chairs than we could in that space. But we still have some needs to take care of. We still have some technology we need to improve. The flooring, the carpet needs to get replaced. And it's going to take all of us to make that happen. So starting today, we're, I put this box out here where we can come and bring our offering. We can come and bring our tithes. On your chair, there, there's a, a card there. Why don't you grab that card that's there next to you or, or close to you? If you don't have one, look behind you or look in front of you. We wanted to, to, to make it easy for you to, to give, and so you can give a one-time gift. You can give a gift over six months. That's how long we want this campaign to go. You can give a lot. You can give a little. Right? We're not basing it on, on what you can give, but everybody can give something. Right? Some can give 1000 some can give $10. And when we put it all together, when we put it all into the chest, and the Lord grabs a hold of it and takes it, great things can happen. So on this card is, is a place there for you to fill out your pledge. There's different ways we can do it. We can put the, the slide up there that tells different ways to give. You can give cash. You can give a, a check in here. Or you can go online at our website at rockaga.com and in the giving spot there's a drop down menu for building fund you can go and give it there and if you're going to do that great go ahead and do that but I want to get a record of, of what's, what you're pledging to give what we're offering to give so if you take a few minutes and, and get that card out and hope you've been praying about it and asking the Lord Lord what can I give what can I do how can I share this, this vision how can I be a part of it how can I partner with it 
this is our chance to, to come together. So fill out that card, and, and you, can, you can, like I said, you can give today, or you can give your card or what you're going to give. And we're going to raise this money because we want to change the carpet here in this, this building. We want to add some, some new technology to, to this room and to the, the old sanctuary. Right? We, we want to turn that into our youth and kids area where they can have services for themselves and, and they can grow. We still have plans. We still have vision. We still have goals. And we also don't want to run out of money. Right? So we still left a little bit in, in our nest egg. We still have some left in savings that we're going to leave there just in case for a rainy day. But help us. Let's all partner together to build and see what God can do here. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that as we gather here this morning, you put upon our hearts, Father, what it will take to, to build your temple. God, let us have the passion that you gave Joash back in the Old Testament to, to be concerned about it, God. God, that we'd we, we, we be passionate about seeing life.